Good evening, everyone. Om Shanti, and a very, very warm welcome to all of you this evening, my brothers and sisters. I've been with the Brahma Kumaris for 38 years, and it really is my great pleasure and honor to be with you here to just welcome you this evening and present this evening to you. So, first of all, we'd like to begin by giving special thanks to the Embassy of India, the Municipality of Rome, and the Italian Hindu Union for their patronage and support. A special thanks, actually, to everyone who's made this evening possible. Grazie a tutti di essere venuti, soprattutto in questo clima torrido dell'estate, e di, esserci, di esservi uniti a noi in questo magnifico Teatro Italia. L'invito di oggi non è solo quello di ascoltare, ma anche quello di dirigerci insieme in un viaggio. Vi vogliamo portare in un viaggio. È una serata per poter sperimentare, immaginare, generare e creare un mondo di pace e di serenità dentro di voi. I also want to thank all of you for coming here this evening. It's very hot outside, I know. And I'm sure that the temperature here this evening will be very comfortable. And so this evening you're here to listen to E.K. Shivani. But I hope that this will be a journey for you, not just to listen, but to travel together to a place inside ourselves where we begin to take responsibility for our lives. And we begin to see that what we experience in our lives also has an impact on the bigger picture on the world around us too. Il video che avete visto descrive la scuola spirituale Brahma Kumaris, che è l'organizzatrice dell'evento. Ci sono varie sedi in Italia, non solo qui a Roma, a Monteverde, ma a Milano, a Bologna e anche altri punti di meditazione nel sud e nelle isole. Brahma Kumaris is a non-profit organization which started in India, but now in Italy we have centers that are in Rome, in Monteverde area, in Milan, in Bologna, and also in the north and south of the islands. Oggi abbiamo la grandissima fortuna di ascoltare Vicky Shivani, Brahma Kumari Shivani, con noi che parlerà del segreto della felicità. Shivani pratica e insegna Raja Yoga in base agli insegnamenti della Brahma Kumaris. Ma Shivani è una persona molto eclettica, ha studiato ingegneria elettronica all'Università di Pune in India ed è stata anche professoressa dell'Università di Ingegneria per due anni. È sposata e vive vicino a Delhi e sarà un grandissimo piacere per noi ascoltarla più tardi. And BK Shivani it's our great fortune to introduce you to her and bring you to uh, bring you to her and bring her to you too. Sister Shivani is um, a teacher and practices Raj Yoga meditation and has been doing so for more than 20 years, although she was exposed to it at a very, very young age. Shivani Ben is an electronics engineer and she gave, got that degree at Pune University in India. She was also a professor there for two years, and she's currently based in Delhi, and is married and lives with her husband in Delhi. La parola di Shivani ha catturato milioni di persone in tutto il mondo. Ha ricevuto molti premi. Durante il giorno internazionale della donna delle Nazioni Unite nel 2019, Shivani ha ricevuto il premio Nari Shakti. Quest'ultimo le è stato consegnato niente poco di meno che dal presidente, sua eccellenza Ram Nath Kovind, presidente dell'India. Ed è il più alto onore che si può ricevere in quel paese. Durante questo tour di Awakening nel Regno Unito ha ricevuto il titolo di ambasciatore della felicità in occasione del giorno internazionale dello yoga. I've had the great fortune to be traveling with Sister Shivani for the last few days, and I'm accompanying her throughout a whole tour of Europe. So I know her a little bit more than just the practical information that's on here, but she herself has, um, has achieved a lot 
just by chance in the sense that she found herself sharing some of these truths that she's learned from the Brahma Kumaris. And because of social media, you know, everything becomes accessible to everyone. So because of social media, people got to hear about her unique way of uh, relating spiritual truths to people. So it's because of that that she also became very um, well known in sharing some of these very practical truths of spirituality. But her, um, her achievements have been great in that she has received several awards of honor during the UN International Women's Day in 2019. Mikhail Shivani was the recipient of the highest civilian honor for women in India, the Nari Shakti Award by His Excellency Ram Nath Govind, the President of India. During the, her current awakening tour in the United Kingdom, she received the title Ambassador of Happiness on the occasion of the International Day of Yoga. So she is a perfect person to speak to us about happiness. Shivani sarà la guida di questo nostro viaggio. Ci porterà in un modo rapido e sicuro verso il risveglio spirituale. E cercheremo di vedere come le speranze di un mondo migliore possono diventare realtà. E noi speriamo che con queste tecniche che ora ci insegnerà renderà l'esperienza una pratica quotidiana che ci possa veramente portare e rilasciare nella felicità. So you're here to listen to Sister Shivani, but actually she's going to take us on a little journey. And the journey will be the experience of what she's sh sharing, but also on the journey of realizing the impact that we have on the wider world around us. As we change, we practically bring about changes in the world around us too. Quando usciremo, ci saranno le sorelle del Brahma Kumaris che ci offriranno un dolcetto con una scritta. Inoltre c'è un tavolino dove se volete contribuire volontariamente per, fare, per permettere di fare eventi come questo che sono tutti sponsorizzati dai membri del Brahma Kumaris e quindi sono autofinanziati, questo permetterà di continuare queste attività. Il contributo sarà un contributo volontario ed è un contributo per continuare a, a nutrirci di questa spiritualità che è così importante in un mondo di oggi. As you leave this evening, the Brahma Kumari's brothers and sisters will share with you a little gift. I personally think that this evening itself is a very special gift that we are sharing with you, but also more to give you a little sweet which is made with love because we're very aware that whatever is the vibration we put into the food that we prepare, that has an impact. So we haven't got an opportunity to share a whole meal with you, but we'd like to share a little sweet. So receive that with a lot of love, just as much love with which it's being prepared and shared with you. And you will also receive a little blessing card. And my experience always been that whatever you receive in that blessing card is the perfect thing for you. In a sense that that is the spiritual, amazing, unique being that you are. That's the expression on that card. But together with that, as you know, you are here for a free evening. And although I don't like this word free because it doesn't mean that it's not worth anything and that's why it's free, but there's no monetary value that can be attached to what's being offered to you this evening. And so Brahma Kumaris is an organization that's run purely by voluntary contributions of people who come and take benefit. So we also like to invite you to contribute in the way that you can. As you go out, there are some contribution boxes that you can use to offer whatever it is that, is, that you can offer to support us with the work that we, that we are doing here in Italy generally. Prima che... Mikei Shivani ci parla, abbiamo una canzone della nostra Angelica che sarà accompagnata da Carlos La Bandera. Vi auguriamo un buon ascolto, una buona esperienza di questa serata. So we're going to invite Angelica to come and sing a song for us again 
And Sister Shivani will also lead us on a journey, but leave us with a really practical experience of meditation. And that meditation background music will again be played by, by Carlos um, to help us create a very powerful atmosphere. Però abbiamo anche il grandissimo onore di avere qui in mezzo a noi, e ci parlerà qualche minuto, l'ambasciatore dell'India, Sua Eccellenza Rinat Sandhu, che ci ha fatto appunto l'onore di venire e di parlarci di questa esperienza magnifica che stiamo vivendo. So, before we leave you to enjoy the evening and have a mind-blowing experience, but a soft, gentle, transformative experience, I'd also like to invite the ambassador of um, India to Italy, come up on the stage and share a few words. It's uh, Rinat Sandhu, Her Excellency Rinat Sandhu will come up and share her good wishes with all of us. Thank you for being with us tonight. Yes. Good evening, everyone. I'm very happy to welcome Brahma Kumari Shivani to Rome and welcome all of you to this evening. I think uh, it was wonderful to hear that uh, Sister Shivani is the ambassador of happiness. And I think there could be nothing more special or important than bringing happiness to everyone. She will be talking today about the secret of happiness, how we can bring happiness in our lives and stay happy, a choice only ours to make. Brahma Kumaris is a global spiritual movement comprising of a worldwide family of individuals from different walks of life, committed to spiritual growth and personal transformation by including a consciousness towards inner peace, harmony, respect, and equality, and inspiring us to live according to our own higher nature and contribute towards a better world. The organization was founded in India in the 1930s, but today Brahma Kumari's service outside India, which began in 1971, comprises of centers and a worldwide network covering more than 110 countries and territories. It has been providing spiritual education and reflective practices to people from diverse cultural backgrounds. In Italy, they have also a large following, as I can see from your presence today, and they have been uh, building uh, bridges of uh, friendship and understanding uh, between India and Italy. And I think spirituality is something which is common that binds both our countries because of our strong belief in spirituality. Uh, Sister Shivani herself, as we heard, is a globally renowned spiritual guide and mentor, a professor at the Bar Brahma Kumari's World Spiritual University, and an expert in Raja Yoga meditation. She has inspired millions through her talks and seminars, providing a practical presentation of spiritual understanding on a wide spectrum of themes. I'm sure we will all benefit from Sister Shivani's profusely positive talk today. And I wish you all a very enjoyable evening. Uh, hope this will help to bring uh, and adopting more spirituality in our lives and bringing happiness to everyone. Thank you. Do you? When it goes like this 
just a foe and a thief The mind of foe and a major leaf The powerful king composing Hallelujah 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 When your faith was strong but you need to prove your soul abating on the roof of beauty in the moonlight overthrew ya. She tied you to a kitchen chair, she broke your throne, and she cut your air, and from your lips she drew. Maybe there's a God above, but all I've ever learned from love was how to shoot somebody with ya. And it's not a cry that you hear at night, it's not somebody who's still alive. We are all here today to begin a journey to be happy always. Happiness, a normal, natural state of being. Happiness is who we are. Happiness is our personality. And yet, we believe that we have to do something to be happy. We have to achieve something to be happy. We have to look for happiness. We have to earn for happiness. And something that was our normal state of being always has become something that we have to work hard for. And we were ready to work for it. We're ready to do anything to be happy. But yet, in spite of all our efforts, sincere, tireless efforts, we sim still seem to be creating stress, worry, and anxiety as our normal state of being. And so it's time to pause and check that when normal is happiness for me, one, I'm working for it, and second, in spite of working for it, 
why is it that I'm not experiencing it always? Why does it have to be an experience which is dependent on something or someone outside? Can I not be happy always? How many of you feel we can be happy always? Raise your hands, happy always. And who will want to be happy always? I want to be happy always. Yes, I want to be happy always. Happiness, a constant, natural, normal feeling. So let's sit back for a few minutes. Just sit straight. Meditation is all about taking a moment during the day to just withdraw from what is outside and just take a moment to check what is inside. We don't need to sit in a specific posture. We don't need to take out hours or days for it. Just a moment. Shifting attention from outside while being with the outside and just shifting and just check if everything is okay inside. So meditation is simply the way to take care of ourselves. I, the being, the creator of my every feeling. Gently shift your attention to the center of the forehead. Very gently shift and bring yourself to the center of the forehead. It's the energy center. It's the place where I, the being, the consciousness, I sit here and create my every thought, my every feeling. I sit here and choose my every word, my every behavior. I the master of this body. I am in charge. I am a happy being. Feel this line and say to yourself, I am a happy being. Happiness is my personality. It's my nature. Happiness is who I am. Happiness 
happiness is what I give to the world. I create a happy world. I am a radiator of happiness. I am happy always. With this feeling and this state of being, I now come back to focus on my outer world. My world of relationships, my world of achievements, my world. I, the happy being, focus on my outer world And while doing everything I do, happiness is my natural way of being. Gently come back, holding on to the feeling, the thought and the experience Come back. Om Shanti. If we were to ask anyone today, what is it that you want in life? The one answer which almost each one has to share is, I want to be happy. I want to be contented. And then you ask them the second question. You have everything you want. You've achieved what you wanted. You've bought what you wanted. You have family and friends with you. There's nothing more you need. You have more than you had asked for. You have more than what you worked for. Then what is it that you still want? And they will say, Yes, I have everything that I wanted. I have everything that I worked hard for. But still, there seems to be some thing which is missing. And I'm not able to pinpoint for myself what's that one thing which is missing. But I don't seem to be happy always. I am happy once in a while. But I want to be happy always. If we compare it to our physical health, we want to be healthy always. Because health is our natural way of being. And I'm comfortable when I'm healthy. But if I don't take care of my body, then disease, small or big, starts manifesting in the body. And I say, I want to be healthy, but... And then I have a reason for why I am not able to experience physical health. But we understand that health is natural, disease is not natural. We're very clear with that, that natural is health, disease is unnatural. 
But when it comes to the state of the being, the mind, emotions which are not comfortable for us, like fear, anxiety, stress and worry, we've gone and labeled them as natural. And as a collective consciousness all over the world, we have started saying stress is normal. Anger is natural. Some people go to the extent of saying anger is necessary. I need to use anger to get work done. Irritation is a part of life. And when we did this, we have labeled emotions which are uncomfortable, which are actually a disease, an emotional illness, we've gone and labeled them as natural. And when we label it as natural, the world accepts it as natural. And once the world accepts it as natural, we do nothing about it. So I say stress is natural. And the next line I say, but I want happiness. So the first thing that we're going to do today is change our definition of what is natural. Change our definition of what is natural. Do not allow the mind to believe that discomfort is natural. Otherwise the mind will never work towards a change. Just check and list out three disturbing emotions which are a part of your life. Because it could be different for each one of us. Three emotions which do not allow me to experience inner calmness, inner peace, inner stillness. And when you select your three, just raise your hands that I've chosen my three. Now just say it to yourself and allow your mind to accept it forever and say this and this and this is unnatural. For example, irritation, hurt and fear is unnatural. We are going to teach that little child that it has learned something wrong. It's like this is a table and this is the chair. But when I was a kid, I called this the chair and this the table. And no one corrected me. So I can grow up and I can be 50 years old and continue to say, this is a chair, this is the table. And I can live my life with a wrong belief system. But it's time to pause and change. And someone has to share with me, no, this is the table, this is the chair. The first time, my mind will not accept it because it's been years and years of conditioning saying, this is the chair, this is the table. But I will not give up on my mind. And I will keep teaching it and teaching it, no, doesn't matter what the world has to say, happiness is natural. Peace is natural. Love is natural. How will I know which one is natural? The one which feels comfortable is natural. The one which does not feel comfortable is unnatural. I may be stressed more than I'm happy, but I'm very clear, stress creates discomfort, happiness feels very good. It's very important to change what I have labeled it so that the mind will know, okay, this is right for me and this is not right for me. Like we teach our mind, what is the right diet for me? What is not the right diet for me? What is the right sleeping time for me? What is not the right time for me? Similarly, I need to teach my mind which emotion is right for me, which emotion is not right for me. Once my mind knows it, 
the journey begins to shift towards happiness. I want to be happy and yet I create this spectrum of emotions because of the second illusion. And that second illusion is that what I'm feeling here is because what is happening in my life here. What I'm feeling here is because of what is happening in my life here. For example, the weather is a little warm today. So the situation is not perfect for us. Warm weather can make us physically uncomfortable. But warm weather cannot disturb us emotionally. See the difference between the two. But if I start creating a thought, horrible weather, depressive weather, water weather, I'm very unhappy with the weather. When I start creating these thoughts, then I'm unhappy. It's not the weather which causes me to be unhappy. It's my thoughts about the weather which causes me to be unhappy. But when I create those thoughts, I say I am disturbed because of the weather. And then I'm disturbed because of someone else. And then I'm upset because of this situation. So I live my life in an illusion which says that every thought, every emotion I'm creating is because of something or someone outside. And because people and situations are not perfect, I cannot be happy always. So if the weather is perfect, I'm happy. If the weather is not perfect, I thought it's normal not to be happy. If my spouse is perfect, I'm happy. And I believed if my spouse does not behave my way, it's natural to get upset. If everything at work is going perfect, I'm happy. But if I put in efforts and it's not going my way, I believed it's natural to get upset. And each time I did this, I was preparing my mind to believe that it is the outside world which creates my feelings. And then started a journey of making the world perfect. Everything in my life should be perfect because when everything is perfect, then I will be happy. When I buy everything that I want, then I will be happy. When I achieve everything I wanted to do, then I will be happy. So happiness became an energy which we believed was going to flow from outside in. And then we started working very hard to making everything outside perfect. Because my happiness seemed to be there in everything being perfect. Someone this morning said, Oh, so your topic this evening is happiness? I said, yes. I said, it's very simple. If you're rich, you're happy. So said, really? So which means happiness is going to be in proportion to how much wealth we have? Yes. A belief system. What does physical comforts give me? It makes my body comfortable. But I believed that if I have all the physical comforts, I will be happy. Happiness is an emotional comfort. Happiness cannot be bought. We need to underline that today. Physical comforts can be bought. And keep on buying. Let's buy all the physical comforts of the world. But while buying them, we need to be very clear, I am buying a comfortable life for myself. I cannot buy them believing I am buying this 
to be happy because then if I get addicted to this belief system, I am buying this to be happy, then I continue buying and buying and buying and buying and I want to buy everything new that's come in the market but in spite of having bought everything, I'm still not happy. And then I want to buy more and more. And then we have a list of never-ending desires. More and more and more. Happiness is not proportioned to how much more we have. Happiness cannot be bought. Comfort can be bought. Happiness has to be created. Each time your mind looks at something in the window and says, I want to buy this because only then I will be happy. Old belief system, I have to gently tell that little child here, we can buy this, no problem in buying this. But we are not buying this for happiness, we are buying this to use it. Very clear, very clear. No illusion that this is going to give us happiness. Otherwise, my car is to give me happiness, my phone is to give me happiness, my house is to give me happiness. Even the new dress I buy is supposed to give me happiness. And then nothing seemed to be enough. It just went on and on. So money can buy a lot of things. But there are a lot of things money cannot buy. Money can buy a lot, but there are some things which money cannot buy. What is it that money cannot buy? What can money not buy? Happiness, one. Money cannot buy happiness. Anything else money cannot buy? Love, money cannot buy. Very good. We know money cannot buy love. Three, health. Beautiful. Money cannot buy health. Money can buy medical treatment. Money can buy medical treatment, but money cannot buy health. Very good. Anything else money cannot buy? Peace also money cannot buy. Anything else? So now we are very clear. There is a long list. Money can buy all that. But there's another list, money cannot buy that. So there are two parts of my life. Just create a scene of your beautiful house with two gardens. One garden on the front side of the house and one garden on the back side of your house. Many of you would be having gardens on both sides of your house. Now, the front side garden of my house is my achievements, my family, and everything that I have to buy. Very important garden of my life. Very, very important. And I work very hard to take care of this garden. In fact, I'm spending almost 24 hours taking care of this garden. Even my physical health is in this garden, which means everything outside is in my front garden. The garden at the back, was this list, peace, love, happiness, everything, garden at the back. What we believed, if I take care of the garden in the front, the garden at the back will be taken care of. So if I achieve, I will be happy. If I have relationships, I will get love. If I earn well, I will get respect. So I thought if I take care of the front garden, the back garden is taken care of. So I spent almost 24 hours taking care of the front garden. And if someone came up to me and said, why don't you meditate for 30 minutes in a day? Which means, why don't you go to the back garden for 30 minutes? My answer was ready. I don't have. I don't have time to go to my back garden. And now the result is today, my front garden has flourished, it's beautiful, but my back garden is going. 
and then we started calling stress normal and today we are saying depression is increasing which means my back garden is really really needs care spiritual principles and meditation means most of the day i am going to be in my front garden but i give at least 30 to 60 minutes in a day to my back garden which means the garden where i create peace love and happiness and when i take care of both the gardens then my life is balanced then i have everything i want in the outer world but i also have everything that i want in the inner world then i have everything that money can buy but i also have everything that money cannot buy because we want both we want both so one belief system which we check and then start creating happiness always is who is the creator of my thoughts comfort is here happiness is here achievement is here happiness is here happiness is if my mind is thinking right in every situation simple equation to be comfortable internally and happy is my mind thinking right in every situation i live from home need to reach a place in 30 minutes i plan my time and then i get stuck on the road in the traffic jam situation not my way it may take 45 minutes it may take 60 minutes i'm getting late where i have to be situation not my way if i think right in those moments i will be happy even stuck in a traffic jam i will be happy because i've created the right response even in a turbulent situation and so i've earned my happiness there but if stuck in the traffic jam i start creating disturbing thoughts i'm late i'm late what will happen now i'm sure something will go wrong i'm sure they're going to be unhappy with me i'm sure this will happen why don't they do something about this traffic this is never ending problems in my city and my mind goes on talking like that then i am disturbed here and when i'm disturbed internally i say i am stressed because of the traffic and i find something to blame for my not being happy and then i reach at work and again someone is not my way i again create disturbing thoughts and then i say i'm upset because they didn't do things the right way scene after scene after scene i keep creating disturbing thoughts and i keep blaming the world for it and i say i'm not happy because the world is not right <laughs> now we master the art of thinking right when the world is not right which means creating a right response even if nothing is right outside because we understand that my thoughts are not dependent on the situation situation is outside i am the creator of my thought anyone here gets angry once in a while no one gets angry please raise your hands acche se anyone gets angry close your eyes for 30 seconds and bring on the screen of your mind the last time you created anger could be today in the day could be last week just look at this scene what had happened that day what did they do
Look at this situation very, very clearly, as if it's happening right now. And then see how you reacted to the situation. You can see it very clearly right now. That was the outer situation and this was my inner reaction. I created my reaction. Now, keeping the situation as it is, nothing changed outside. Nothing, absolutely nothing changed outside. Just focus on yourself and see yourself responding a different way to the same situation. Nothing is changing in the situation and the scene or the people's behavior. Just focus on yourself responding a different way to the same situation. And choose a response which is comfortable for you. And just show me your hand when you have seen yourself responding a different way. Beautiful. Thank you. Good. Now, this is where we are very clear now. Situation is the same. Last time, I reacted. Reacted could be I got disturbed in my thoughts. Reaction could mean I was verbally a little aggressive. Sometimes reaction is also in my body language the way I walk, the way I move, the way my hands move at that time, everything changes because the energy flows from the soul to the body. That was my reaction. A reaction which I believed was because of the situation. And now when you looked at that scene, you created another response. Will anyone share? What was the other response you created? What did you see yourself doing now? How was the response another way? What was the response? What was the response? Accepting them, yes. And then how was the response? How were the words? How was the body language? And most important, how was I feeling here? How many were able to see the response another way, which was a more comfortable response? Everybody. And this is a proof. This is what I need to prove to myself that the situation does not create my reaction. The situation does not create my reaction. Situation same, I choose my response. And the second time when you saw it, you chose a response which created happiness and peace. You created happiness in that moment. And in the earlier reaction, you created anger, aggression. Both are our creations. Both are our creations. If we had to take up a personal challenge today, 24 hour challenge, let anything happen in my life and anything means anything, for 24 hours I will respond with calm, peace and stability. 24 hours. People will be their way, situation will be their way, I will be my way. We all want to be our way. And my way of responding with calm, peace, easy, stability. 24 hours. 
24 hours. Personal commitment and self-responsibility. I can do this for 24 hours. Everyone? Everyone? Be confident of yourself. Don't do this. Confident is we're talking about ourselves. We're not talking about somebody else. I can do this for 24 hours. And now when we do this for 24 hours, we are going to create happiness for 24 hours. And you're going to be happy always in the next 24 hours. Situations may be right, situations may not be right. People may be nice, people may not be nice. Somebody may be polite, someone may be rude. That's their choice. That is their choice. They choose to be their way. I choose to be my way, the happy way. I am the creator of my response always and always and always. Let's say it together. I choose to be my way. People will be their way. I will be, I will be my way. And my way is the happy way. Because, because I am a happy being. I am a happy being. Look at this glass. Let's say this glass is full. This is my mind. It's happy in the morning. All that I need to do during the day. Take this glass of water, walk around the hall, meet people, interact, work with them, come back on the stage with the glass full. Step down, meet people, talk to them, See that everything is going right. Spend the entire day there. Climb up on this stage. Glass should be full. Can we do that? Can we do that? Yes. And which means I am a happy being. Now what am I going to do? Go out in the morning for the day. Meet people. Work. Do everything my every responsibility. But while doing everything I am doing, taking care, my happiness is full. Which means, my first responsibility is to take care of my mind. Get into a situation which is a crisis, solve it, face it. But with the responsibility, I am stable, now I face the situation. And when we do that, we are going to return home in the evening, happier than what we went out in the morning. Happier than when we went out in the morning. Because when I'm calm, when I'm peaceful and stable, my natural way of being with people will be kind. I will be kind to people. I loved a very nice thing on the road in your city. Every time someone wants to cross the road, you stop the car. Right? So when you stop the car, you're allowing the person to be their way and you are ready to pause for them. This is a kindness. This is the power to adjust with another person. Now let's shift that to not just doing it while we're on the road, but to do it in every scene of our life. 
people want to cross. People want to be their way. I need to pause and allow them to be their way. Allow them to be their way because I cannot change them. So take a moment, pause, allow them to be their way, but yourself, very comfortable, stable, because they are their way, I am my way. Happiness would mean kindness in action. If I'm not happy, I start losing my power to be kind. If I'm not happy, I cannot be compassionate because I don't have the strength to understand people. And if I'm not kind and I'm not compassionate, then I disturb other minds. And when I disturb other minds, I receive disturbed energy from them. To be happy always, just take care of one thing. In everything you do and with everyone who you are, make it the purpose of your life to earn blessings. Earn blessings with everyone on the road, at work, at home, being kind, being compassionate, understanding them, accepting them, radiating happiness to them because I am calm, earning blessings. The more money we earn, the more physically comfortable we will be, the more blessings we earn, the more emotionally comfortable we will be. The more emotionally comfortable we will be. Earning blessings should be the purpose of our life. Blessings is not that what is given on special days, special occasions, important days. Blessing is a thought which should radiate to people every day, always. But I need to do that so that I earn blessings from people. And kindness earns blessings. Kindness earns blessings. And blessings make us emotionally rich. And emotionally rich is emotionally comfortable. And emotionally comfortable is happy always. Doing the same what we are doing every day, same work, same people, everything is same. But just that little extra so that I'm earning blessings. Everyone likes blessings. We ask people to bless us. We don't need to ask people to bless us. We need to be that way by which we will earn blessings automatically. Because when we are kind to people, we understand them even if they have not been right to us. We are calm and stable even if they are aggressive and rude, we radiate compassion to them, we earn blessings. And blessings is a source of happiness. Money cannot buy blessings. All the wealth I have cannot earn me blessings. So blessings I need to check two bank balances. Like we have a financial bank account, we also need to have a blessing bank account. How much blessings did I earn today? 
like we save money that the day there is a problem i should have money so we save money we earn we save similarly the day there is any obstacle in my life more than the money it's my blessings which will help me that day but i need to have earned those blessings on the journey of life and why will someone bless me they will bless me if i am calm stable understanding and compassionate to them always if kindness is my natural way of being i will earn blessings always and so i need to check how rich am i here but if i react like we saw that scene when we created anger i could have got angry for 30 seconds or 1 minute but even in my that 1 minute of anger someone else will get hurt i may forget that i shouted at them or i was rude to them but they will take hours sometimes days and sometimes years to forget what i did and so that one moment of aggression causes pain there and they do not forget so till they do not forget i will keep receiving that emotional pain from them and that emotional pain which i receive from them is the energy which is opposite of blessings blessings is when i receive pure positive energy from them but when i receive pain from them it is an energy which is opposite of blessings the world today believes that i need to earn for myself to be happy the truth is the opposite i need to be there for people give to people serve people earn blessings to be happy our nature is to give give does not mean we give what we have physically but give means what we have emotionally give to people kindness in action always throughout the day let's not wait for people to ask us for help let's be kind to them help them and support them even before they ask for it blessings and blessings and blessings and those who earn blessings will always be emotionally rich emotionally rich because they have earned blessings so now three equations to be set one happiness is natural happiness is natural the other disturbing emotions are unnatural it's an emotional illness second who is the creator of my happiness who's the creator of my happiness i people and situations cannot touch me emotionally i am emotionally independent we all love freedom we all love our independence physical independence financial independence social independence but most important is emotional independence and emotional independence means what i'm feeling here is not dependent outside so every day i need to remind myself i am emotionally independent i am emotionally independent so my second equation for myself which i need to be clear every day is i am the creator of my response never ever and never ever 
ब्लेम समथिंग और सम वन आउटसाइड फॉर हाउ यू आर फीलिंग नेवर से दे हर्ट मी दे अपसेट मी ही इरिटेटेड मी शी डिस्टर्ब मी नेवर बिकॉज दिस वो कैबलरी मीन्स दे आर क्रिएटिंग माई फीलिंग्स विच इज नॉट द ट्रूथ आई एम द क्रिएटर ऑफ माई रिस्पॉन्स I choose to be calm and stable and happy always. Purpose of my life to earn blessings. To earn blessings. There are a few very very simple lifestyle changes we can make. Very simple because spiritual principles teach us how to create emotional health like to be physically healthy we take care of our diet of exercise good sleep similarly for emotional health i am the creator of my feelings and thoughts but what is the source of what i create emotional diet in order to be emotionally healthy i need to take care of my emotional diet please fix this one line here forever it'll help you to take care of your emotional diet what i watch what i read what i listen to creates my thoughts and feelings everything i watch everything i read everything i listen to creates my emotions and feelings so information that goes in what i watch read and listen the information goes in and it's what goes in that creates our thoughts and feelings since the time we are flooded with information from media and social media too much content too much 24 by 7 we have content at hand every click is content and we need to check the quality of that content if i watch movies or serials which are crime based and i watch them a little too often then eventually sooner or later fear will start becoming my emotion because i have consumed content which is fear based if i consume content which is about terror which is about violence and i consume it on a regular basis then eventually sooner or later anger and aggression becomes my emotion so what i watch read listen is my emotional nutrition and as will be the quality of that emotional diet so will be the quality of my thoughts many of us the first thing in the morning when we wake up for many of us the first thing that we check is our phone open my eyes and it's my phone and in my first thought of the morning i get connected to the outside world what does the world have to say to me this morning what do my friends on social media have to say to me this morning and just within the first few minutes i consume content it's these first few minutes which are very very crucial so experiment with the new self discipline this is a self discipline that we have to create and you can do that this night and tomorrow morning and see how it works because it really really works let's begin the first hour of the morning without technology which means phone tv 
just an hour in the morning. Which means if I wake up at 5, then I switch on my phone at 6. Giving my mind that hour to be with myself, to think about myself, to create beautiful thoughts, to meditate, to study. Study and absorb content which is full of compassion, love, happiness. Because if I consume that, then that is what I become. First hour of the morning. Just an hour. Take care of the emotional diet in the first hour of the morning. Can we experiment first one hour without the phone? Ready to make it a self-discipline? Yes? Yes? Self-discipline? Only one hour. Only one hour. Which means we will read and listen to the world news an hour later. We will check our social media posts an hour later. We will see our work-related emails and messages an hour later. I don't need to be at work in my mind at 6 o'clock in the morning. If I go to work at 7 or 8, I don't need to be at work in my mind at 6 o'clock in the morning. My mind needs rest. Today we are emotionally unwell, which means we create disturbing emotions because our mind is tired. It is fatigued because it's consuming negative content. So just an hour in the morning, we don't need to do a digital detox for an entire day. It won't work. We can't consume junk food for 10 days and then one day detox and the next 10 days again consume junk food. It doesn't work that way. We will consume healthy diet every day to be healthy always. So just an hour in the morning, no technology and spending that hour to study spiritual principles, meditate, yoga, exercise, everything for the soul and for the body. Which means the first 60 minutes of my day is my time. The world is talking today about me time. And everyone is saying, this is me time, this is me time. But I need to know what to do in that me time. Me time cannot be reading about the world news, that is not me time. Me time means me time. Me time means which will nourish me, which will energize me, which will strengthen me, which will allow me to create the right response always. Me time makes me healthy. So first hour in the morning and then during that first hour in the morning, create one affirmation for yourself. Create one affirmation. For example, our affirmation for tomorrow morning can be, I am a happy being. Next day, our affirmation can be, I am a compassionate being. Third day, our affirmation can be, I am a kind being. Fourth, I am a peaceful being. Fifth, I am a loveful being. Every day, a new affirmation. Affirmation means I choose how I'm going to be today. Most of us have a planner which says, what am I going to do today? So we plan our doing for the day, but we don't plan our being for the day. What we say, I am, and then we write after that, very soon becomes our reality. What is happening in the world today? People are saying, I am stressed. Somebody else is saying, I am upset. 
another one is saying i am depressed and what many of us are saying i am busy take care never ever write i am followed by a negative emotion it will become a reality i am should always be followed by a positive feeling even if it's not present today it will become a reality if i start thinking and saying i am if i say i am stressed so i will be if i say i am depressed so i will be and if i start saying i am a happy being very soon so i will be so meditation means choosing an affirmation creating a thought about that affirmation and while creating that thought visualizing yourself being that way throughout the day so like we've chosen that for next 24 hours we are going to be calm and stable so for that you will need to spend a few minutes tomorrow morning just sit back few minutes i am a happy being and then see yourself throughout the day happy stable calm that is meditation affirmation visualizing that affirmation and allowing it to get recorded here as an experience along with saying i am a happy being i can start adding another line to my affirmation and that is i am the child of god the ocean of happiness god loves me always god is with me always let anything happen today i am happy and i am protected by god's blessings this is a blessing that i give to myself to begin the day and if i begin the day with the right state of mind the right preparation here nothing during the day can touch us then after that emotional independence becomes normal so first hour of the morning my time choosing my affirmation meditating visualizing that affirmation connecting to god energizing ourselves emotionally strengthening myself for the day then during the day at the brahma kumaris we have a very very beautiful practice it's called traffic control of the mind and which means after every hour we pause for a minute just a minute meditation need not be hours meditation can be just for a minute so every 59 minutes pause take a minute revise the affirmation for the day which means tomorrow morning i am a happy being and then every hour pause for a minute and revise and repeat i am a happy being see myself responding right to every situation and we all have a minute we all have a minute then just before going to sleep many of us today are not experiencing very good sleep we are sleeping but we are not experiencing deep sleep and that's why some of us sometimes need to even take something to get sleep so when happiness did not remain natural then sleep also does not become natural for us and in some countries of the world sleeping medicine is the highest selling medication 
natural became unnatural. Why is that happening? Because during the day, we're thinking too much. Just before going to sleep, we are again with technology. Again feeding content inside. Whether it's a movie, whether it's a TV show, whether it's a comedy show which is talking about people or ridiculing somebody, whether it's a crime show, whether it's the world news. If I fill myself with this kind of content before going to bed, then it's very difficult for my mind to slow down. My mind will not be able to slow down because I stimulated and triggered my mind just before going to bed. So to have good sleep, because good sleep is needed for emotional health. Good sleep is not just for physical health. Good sleep is needed for emotional health. Good sleep is needed for me to respond right to every situation tomorrow. A tired mind gets irritated. A tired mind reacts. A nourished, nurtured mind responds with ease. So second experiment is just before going to bed, an hour again without technology. So our digital detox does not need to be for a day. It just needs to be two hours every day. First hour of the morning and last hour of the day. Because those two hours are most important for the mind. First hour of the morning decides how my day will be. Last hour of the day decides how my night sleep will be. And I need to take care what I consume in these two hours, the first and the last. And the last hour of the day, reflect on the day. Write out if you want what happened during the day and how did I respond to what happened during the day. And prepare your mind again with meditation to respond right to the same situation when it happens again the next day. Cleaning the mind and preparing it for the next day. So first hour of the morning, a minute every hour and the last hour of the day. Another factor which is important for a peaceful and happy mind is our diet, what we eat. Many of us today have shifted to a vegan diet. And we believe we are doing that for our health, we're doing it for our planet. But a vegan diet is also very, very, very helpful to be happy. A vegan diet makes us emotionally healthy. We just need to experiment and see how it works. Experimenting is important for experiencing. Food has vibrations. And the vibrations of the food affect our mind. And that's why we learned we are what we eat. We are what we eat. So the vibrations of what we eat need to be very pure and high energy. In Hindi, the word is a sattvic diet, sattvic, high energy diet. And if I consume a high energy, pure vibration diet, a diet of peace, love, happiness, not a diet of aggression, pain, helplessness, violence and death, if I just change my diet and my vibrations of my diet, my mind will start calming down. But it's an experiment that we need to do. And when I experiment, I experience. When I experience, I make it my lifestyle. So emotional diet in terms of what we watch, read, listen, but emotional health also in terms of what we eat and drink is very important to create a pure, powerful soul which responds right and thinks right in every situation, then happiness is not something that we will need to work for. Happiness will be a natural way of being because we will create the right thoughts, 
and the right response in every situation. And this is power. Happiness is power because the energy of the situation and people will not be able to overpower us. We will remain calm and stable and influence the situation and people. Not get influenced, influence situation and people with our vibrations. So ready for the 24 hour commitment? 24 hour commitment? Yes? Remember our 24 hour commitment? Let anything happen. And anything means anything. I am emotionally independent. I choose my response of being calm and stable. Any of you experience that you are busy during the day and use the vocabulary, I am busy? Anyone uses the vocabulary, I am busy? Let's experiment with another word there. Doing everything that we are doing, working for how many ever hours we need to work, but do not use the word busy because busy is a low vibration word. To be happy, we need to change our vocabulary from low vibration words to high vibration words. Every word has an energy and our words create our world. So we need to take care of our words. If I keep saying, I'm busy, I don't have time. I'm busy, I don't have time. This is turbulent energy. Just replace the word and say, I am easy, I have lot of time. Time and money is an attitude. Some people have lot of wealth and they believe we don't have enough. And some people have average amount but they say I have more than I need. It's not about the amount, it's the attitude. So an attitude of lack, I don't have enough, whether it's about money or it's about time, does not allow us to be happy. Does not allow us to be happy because we believe that we are lacking. So just the vocabulary change will change how you feel. I am easy, I have a lot of time. I have more time than I need. I have more wealth than I need. I have more than I want. Every line that my mind speaks will shift me from wanting to be contented. And when I'm contented, I'm happy. So one hour in the morning, a minute after every hour, and one hour just before going to bed, and then taking care of what we eat and drink. During our meal times, meals are not nourishment only for the body. Meals are nourishment for the soul, for the mind. Some of us watch television or are working with our iPad or are with our phones while we are having our meal. This depletes soul power. Food is vibration. Food is vibration. And what I'm thinking, watching, talking while I'm eating becomes the vibration of my food and becomes the vibration of my mind. We should create a self-discipline and a culture for the family. 10 minutes while eating. No phone. No TV, no phone, no television, no arguments, no problem discussion. Meals should be in silence or meals should be with happy conversation because meal gives me emotional nutrition also. Very, very simple things. 
very easy to practice, can be implemented from today itself, can become a lifestyle within a week, and can shift us from a lower vibration to a very, very high vibration of calm and ease during the day because of certain spiritual changes that we have created in our lifestyle. Meditation means increasing and enhancing my emotional health by spiritually nourishing myself. A daily spiritual study and connecting with God, the source of all powers, unconditional love and unlimited happiness. We are not just happy, we have the power to experience unlimited happiness when we connect to the source. When we experience God's presence in our life, not just as a concept, but a very, very personal relationship. And that happens when we start meditating. So meditation gives us an opportunity and an experience to create a personal relationship with God and a very beautiful relationship with the self. With the self. And so a few minutes of meditation every morning gives me the power to remain stable during the day, allows kindness and compassion to be natural, and I earn blessings, and I am become emotionally very, very, very wealthy. Contented always. Come, let's sit back and let's prepare the mind for the next 24 hours. How I'm going to be. How I'm going to be. After a few minutes of meditation, we will walk out in silence and spend the next 10, 15 minutes driving, walking home in silence. Silence to internalize what we have absorbed. Silence to decide what lifestyle changes I'm going to make. Silence to nourish the soul. And as we walk out in silence, we will get a sweet which has been prepared by the sisters at the Brahma Kumaris Meditation Center. A sweet energized with powerful vibrations of meditation and love. And a very personal blessing card. It's a blessing for each one of us. And each one's blessing will be different. And we will get a leaflet which will have details of the coming programs going to be organized by the Brahma Kumaris Meditation Center. You have a very beautiful center in your city. And it has a very, very powerful meditation room. Even if you just come and spend a few minutes in the center where everyone's been meditating for many years, just coming there and being there in an energy of meditation, even if we don't know how to meditate, if we just come there and be there for a few minutes, the mind starts becoming still. And this mind starts getting connected to the being and connecting to who we are the natural way. The meditation course is going to be held the coming weekend, that is 6th and 7th of July, in Italian. It's going to be 5 to 7.30 in the evening. Just two days to learn meditation. And only two hours each day. Five to seven, two days only. Saturday and Sunday, 6th and 7th of July at the center. These two hours will introduce us to ourself. We will understand how to take care of ourselves. 
we will understand the powers that we have and how to emerge the power within us and we will learn the beautiful art of creating a personal relationship with God. So 6th and 7th of July, 5 to 7 p.m., the meditation course will be in Italian. There's a very special talk by Brother Mohit in English and Italian on Thursday, 18th of July, 7 p.m., again at the same meditation center. Mohit is a CEO of a multinational company and he's coming from Abu Dhabi and he will share with us how we can be happy and stable always even while doing work, traveling, achieving, being in different situations but being happy always. If we want to do the meditation course in Hindi, agar hum Hindi mein मेडिटेशन का कोर्स करना चाहते हैं तो हम सेंटर पर बताएंगे तो सेंटर से बहने हम जहां हैं और जहां हमारा ग्रुप है वहां आकर हमें मेडिटेशन सिखाएंगे कब सेट बैक स्ट्रेट एंड लेट्स एक्सपेरिमेंट विद कीपिंग आवर आईज ओपन टुडे ड्यूरिंग मेडिटेशन the reason being, meditation is the art of creating the right response. My affirmation and my visualization, I need to keep do doing it during the day. I cannot keep closing my eyes always. Meditation is a lifestyle. So let's experiment. Keep your eye open. And just focus it on the point of light there behind me. Just to concentrate, nothing else. Otherwise you can focus it wherever you want. Choose any point. And that too only because we are doing it for the first time. So if we shift our eyes, we get distracted. So choose any one point to focus your eyes. The vibration we create radiates out to the world through our eyes. The eyes reflect our state of being. Relax the body and just breathe in and out three times. Inhale, exhale, Inhale and out. Let the body relax. Inhale and exhale. This body is my costume. As we create every thought, we will keep visualizing it. The body is my costume. I am the master of this body. I choose what to think. I choose what to speak. I choose what to do. I have choice always. Always. Bring your attention to the center of the forehead. I the being. Energy. 
tiny point of light. In the center of the forehead. Creator of every thought and feeling. I am a happy being. I am a happy being. Happy always. I choose happiness. I choose my response in every situation. I choose calm, stability. I choose happiness. People will be their way. I am my way. The next 24 hours, my personal experiment. I know what I'm going to do in the next 24 hours. I choose now how I'm going to be in the next 24 hours. At home. On the road. At work. Scene after scene. I choose my response. I respond with ease and dignity, calm and stability to every scene that unfolds in the next 24 hours. I am the master. I create my destiny. I create my life. I create my every response. I'm kind. I'm compassionate. I earn blessings in my every interaction. I earn blessings. I take care of my emotional diet. I choose what I watch, read, listen, eat and drink. Everything I consume 
is pure and nourishing. My time, an hour every morning, an hour before bed, it's my time. Meditation is my lifestyle. The next 15 minutes as we walk out, absolute silence, like angels walking out, light, easy. We pick up our sweet, our blessing card, our program leaflet, we can buy literature, we can do everything with this calm and stillness. And we carry this energy with us as we drive home. And next weekend, Saturday and Sunday, 5 p.m., just two hours, Meditation is taught by the Brahma Kumari sisters as a service to the community. There's never ever a cost attached to any of the activities. All that we need to do is commit that two hours to ourselves. Next 15 minutes in silence. Request the first three rows to start walking out in silence. First three rows. Angels radiating love and happiness as they walk out. Next three rows. Next three rows. Next three rows. 